Hello everyone! Today, I have a mini PC. It's almost as small as an Android box, but how capable is it? Let's see! Build quality is pretty good. It's all metal with an external plastic antenna. There's not much flex to it. It feels pretty sturdy. It has a rather large logo on top, and not much else. Also, it has a very long name. Mad Giga AP34 Pro. Opening up the computer was easy. However, once I opened it up, there wasn't much I could do. RAM and storage are already soldered to the motherboard, and even if there's an MTM.2 slot, it's pretty hard to reach. When it comes to the I.O., it's not bad at all. It has 2 HDMI, 1 gigabit Ethernet, 3.5mm audio jack, 4 USB 3.0 ports, as well as an SD card reader. So, we know it has a decent build quality and plenty of ports, but what are the specs? It has a quad-core Intel Celeron M3450 processor that has a base clock of 1.1 GHz and boosts up to 2.2 GHz. It also has 6 GB of RAM and 64 GB of eMMC storage. It comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. However, it comes with an extra activation manual that warns you to skip the license key entry step during the installation. If you bought a pre-built PC in the last decade or so, you'll know that you're never asked to enter a license key during installation. The funny thing is, I never had that screen when I was installing it. Mine was already activated. After a couple of minutes of waiting for the first boot, and around 12 hours for updates, I was ready to go. And yes, I waited 12 hours for updates. My internet connection is pretty fast, and downloading all those updates took less than an hour. But I guess this is how long it takes for such a small computer to upgrade from version 1703 to version 1903. I didn't take this when I was upgrading it to 1903. Instead, it's just a random update it was doing when I turned it on for a couple of tests. As you can see, even if it's a small update, it still took around 10 minutes. If you were to get this computer, I strongly recommend you do the updates when you're not in a rush to use it. Let's talk about the processor. It's a quad-core Celeron that boosts up to 2.2GHz, and on the long run, it stays at around 1.4GHz. It gets 124 from Cinebench R15 multi-core, which is close to a 4th Gen i3. I wanted to do a screen recording, but it affects the performance a lot, and I don't have a capture card. I also own a Surface Go with a Pentium processor, and it gets around 150 from Cinebench. Overall, I can say that this computer is snappier than my Go, mainly due to the resolution. In any case, it's not super powerful. However, it's virtually silent due to the fanless design, and with a TDP of 6 watts, you don't need to worry about keeping it running all night. In daily tasks, such as browsing the web using Chrome, using the Windows Metro apps, or working on Office documents, it's surprisingly snappy. It has 6 GB of RAM, and in 2019, where 4 gigs of RAM isn't enough, the extra 2 gigs give the computer some room to breathe. Also, the 64 gig MMC storage by SanDisk is pretty quick compared to other MMC powered devices I've used, such as the Surface Go, which helps a lot in daily tasks. I mentioned in the beginning that it has two HDMI ports and that it supports 4K. It does support 4K, but only at 30 Hz, which is a bummer. In any case, I don't think the Intel HD 500 graphics are enough for a 2 4K monitor setup. It also supports 5 GHz AC Wi-Fi, and it has an external antenna for better reception, but the reception is average at best. I did plenty of speed tests using all my devices at the same spot, and here are the results. It also has Bluetooth 4.0, which is a nice touch. However, I've had some issues with it, especially when the computer is under full load. I was initially using a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse, but I would get connection problems every time the CPU usage is 100%. I wonder whether this is a power issue. Overall, what do I think about this computer? I think it's a fantastic basic computer that you can get for a family member or your kid. Or that you can use as a second computer, or a streaming box like I do. It's snappy, it's reasonably priced, and well built. It currently sells for $247 on Amazon, but you can often get deals and coupons. For $250? It's not an Android box replacement, it's also not the best PC you can build for $250, but it's a nice option if you're looking for a very small computer that is virtually silent. Thanks for watching and I really hope I'll see you next time.